So I'm gonna show you how to do five basic woodworking joints in this video. So we'll do a basic uh, butt joint like this. We'll talk about making basic boards. We'll do a miter joint. We'll do a rabbit. We'll do dados. And I'll show you how to do uh, mortise and tenon. Now you can use just these basic uh, tools and tips and workflows I'm gonna show you in this video to create all of this stuff, you could do bookcases, tables, any sort of woodworking project, um, just with these basic tips and techniques I'm gonna show you in this video. So let's get started with uh, this right here. Now you can use um, SketchUp Pro. This is SketchUp Pro right here. You can use SketchUp Free. Just go to app.sketchup.com and you can create a free uh, SketchUp account there. The tool interface will be slightly different, but you can really follow along um, just as well with SketchUp free. So to start out, you need to create some boards. So we'll grab the rectangle tool right here um, or the letter R on your keyboard to activate the rectangle tool with uh, keyboard shortcuts. And you're going to click once to anchor the first corner and click again to anchor the second corner. Then we'll add dimensions immediately after to define uh, the size we want. So we can do three quarter inch comma um, one foot enter. And so it resizes it for us. So you can input dimensions as you're drawing or immediately after. Next, we're gonna extrude it with the push pull tool. So that's the letter P or this tool right here and click once extrude up and then click again and then type in the dimension. So I'll do 3.5 inch enter. So notice how you can provide decimal or fractional uh, measurement input. You can also provide millimeters if you're into metric. You can provide any unit of measurement you want. These are all real world dimensions. So it just works. So use whatever unit of measurement you want. You don't need to go configure anything. You just use it. Now. So we can imagine this is a basic board and immediately after creating a basic shape, you wanna create a uh, group or component out of these entities. And so what I mean by that is right here, when I click on this board here, the entire board becomes selected. If you try to select this board, you're actually just selecting the individual face or you know the edge, whatever you're clicking on, you're selecting the base simple entity. Um, so in order to create a wrapper around this object so we can move it and manipulate it in one move, we need to triple click. So one, two, three, and then right click. And we're going to use groups for now. So make group. So now we have a basic container around this shape and we can make a copy of it using uh, a number of different ways. We're gonna use the rotate tool and make a copy at the same time. So this is the rotate tool right here. You can tap Q on your keyboard to activate it. And you'll notice how SketchUp snaps to different points in the model. So the rotate tool allows you to rotate um, along any axis, but we want the uh, blue axis. So we'll tap up on our keyboard to lock the blue axis. So that'll be the, the rotation axis that we're gonna rotate this along. And we're gonna snap to this outside corner right here. So we'll click once to anchor the pivot point. We'll establish our first angle of rotation right here. So click again, and then we wanna make a copy. So we'll tap control and we'll rotate this 90 degrees. Now, real quick to orbit and zoom, you're gonna use your mouse. So you wanna use a three button mouse to zoom. This is gonna zoom in and out the scroll wheel, but also when you press it and uh, move the mouse, that is gonna orbit. So by pressing down the middle mouse button, you can orbit the camera around your model. So just using zoom and orbit, that's how you get around in SketchUp. So that is your basic um, a basic joint. And, and really you could build this entire bookcase just using that technique. So let's move on to the miter. So I'm going to just copy 
this so we don't have to recreate that from scratch. So I dragged a selection box around those two objects, grab the move tool right here, or M on your keyboard, click once, tap control to make a copy, click again, and then I'm gonna do 5X to make five copies. And so to make a, a miter like this, we're gonna edit these existing uh, groups right here. So there's a number of different ways to do pretty much everything in SketchUp. So I'm gonna try to show you um, a couple of different techniques for each of these examples so you can kind of learn things um, along the way. So with this first one, what we can do is, um, so first of all, to modify the entities inside of this group, we just need to double click on it with a select tool and that is gonna open it up. And now we can select all of the in individual edges and faces. And so one thing we could do is use the line tool. So that's the letter L on your keyboard. And we can use this inference system where we, we're snapping to different points and intersections in the model. And we can just draw a line like this. And now if I go back to the select tool, which is spacebar, I can select uh, these different faces. So we've actually subdivided this face. And from here, I can use the push pull tool right here and extrude this down. So the push pull tool extrudes up, but it can also subtract from objects as well. Now, uh, another way that we could have made this miter. So if I grab the select tool and just click anywhere outside of this bounding box, we can close that group. If I double click on this group here, Another alternative way to make the miter would be to select this edge here and then grab the move tool, the letter M, and I could move this point to this point. And so the move tool will move whatever you have selected. So I have that edge selected. And so wherever I move the mouse, um, that the selection set will move with it. So SketchUp Everything in SketchUp is made up of edges and faces. And whenever you move something, everything else is gonna stay connected to it. And so that's why it's important to use groups and components because it'll isolate the geometry um, just to make sure you know you're only modifying what's inside of that group or component. All right, so let's move on to uh, a little rabbit here. So in this case, we might jump inside of this group use the push pull tool and snap to the midpoint. So midpoint is another uh, inference point that you can use uh, on, on different objects in the model. And then we'll grab the select tool, click outside to close that group. And now we need to edit this group. So we'll double click this one to open this one. And maybe I'll use the rectangle tool to um, trace over these lines here. And so now, and here's one, here's one trick. When you're editing a group or component, one thing I like to do a lot is go to view, component edit, hide rest of model. Now I have a special keyboard shortcut for that so I can um, toggle that really quickly. Um, and I definitely recommend you setting that up. If you wanna watch my other video on creating custom, key, custom keyboard shortcuts, and so you can see a little bit better um, the context of what you're working on. So we just traced over this and it does the same thing that we did in the previous uh, miter example. So it subdivides the face and we can use the push pull tool to extrude that down and get rid of it. Now to do a dado, it's, it's basically the same thing. So let's go ahead and move this into position. We'll grab the move tool. We'll bring this right here. And let's say we want to move this six inches. So six inch enter. And we want to bring this in a quarter of an inch. So we'll move this a quarter of an inch in. And now we need to jump inside of this group and cut this dado. So we'll double click to open it. We need to turn off hide rest of model so we can see where this intersects. We can use the rectangle tool again to subdivide that face and then push pull down to here. And you can see we've cut that dado. And lastly, we'll try creating a mortise and tenon. So I'll move this over here 
and we'll double click inside of here, turn on hide rest of model. And so let's create the tenon first. So one way to do this is to use the offset tool right here. And we can offset this face by say a quarter of an inch. So 0.25. And then we can use the push pull tool and extrude this out three quarters of an inch like this. Then grab the select tool, click once outside. If we wanted to have this same flat orientation, we could do that. We could select it, grab the move tool, and then just use these, um, these grips that are on the group and click once. This is kind of just a shortcut so you don't have to grab the rotate tool. And then we could do the same thing here, move tool, rotate that, and then we can just move this in place. Now we need to cut the, um, the mortise in this board here. So one thing you could do in this case is turn on uh, X-ray mode. So go to view, face style, X-ray, and you can see um, the, the geometry that's hidden by the faces. So you could just double click on, with the select tool, you could double click on this board here and then just trace over where the tenon intersects. So that's one way you could do it. Another way to do it is to use the intersect faces command. So select the face, right click, intersect faces with model. And then if we hide rest of model, we can see that it intersects wherever a face went through that face. So in, in this case, it did this, this outer face because the tenon, there's actually no face in there. Um, it's actually just hollow. There's no, there's no face there. So we just need to use the offset tool again, and we can offset this in a quarter of an inch. And then we can use the eraser tool, which is the letter E, erase those two, and then push pull these inside and snap to uh, the tenon. All right, so that is uh, a few different ways to create some common joints in SketchUp. And really you can use these techniques um, to build really complex woodworking projects uh, just using these few basic tools. So that's all I have for you in this video. If you like this video, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you wanna learn more about SketchUp, you can check out my book, SketchUp to Layout, either on Amazon or in the link below. You can use a coupon 10 off to save 10% on your order. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.